I'm David Tracy with Jalopnik. I'm at a junkyard near Detroit on a quest to grab the coolest car parts I can find, take them back to my workbench, and show you how they work. Let's see what I can find. All right, I'm off to find an alternator. Look at these Mustangs. Huh? Let's see if they got alternators for us. Yes, that's a good candidate there. That's right at the top of the engine. We could snag that in a heartbeat. Mustang alternators. Pretty easy to get to. All right, we've got a Firebird right here. Bright red, sticks out like a sore thumb. This will work. It's got a 3.4 liter V6. The alternator is right up front. Got an external fan. Should be able to pull this in a couple of minutes. So your headlights, your radio, your heated seat, your fuel pump, your ignition system, all of the electronics in your car are powered by a 12 volt battery that normally sits here but is absent on this car. And that battery gets charged by an alternator, which is driven by your serpentine belt. So we're gonna take this alternator out, crack it open, and see what's inside. Time to get wrenching. Alternator is out. Looks like we've got a couple of plugs here on the back side. And there we go. Our alternator. Now we'll take it on my workbench, break into it, and see what we can see inside. All right, so now that we've got this alternator out of the Firebird, we can have a closer look. So on the outside of the casing, what we can see is the pulley, which is driven by the serpentine belt, and which spins this external fan, which sucks air in from the back of the alternator, cools the diodes and windings inside, and exhausts that hot air out of the front. On the back, we can see some terminals here. There's this one here between the alternator and the battery. This is how your battery gets charged. This other connection's got terminals inside, like the sensing terminal, which communicates your car's electrical load to the alternator, and also terminals for things like your tachometer, and there's also a terminal for your field current. We'll get into what that is right now when we crack this thing open. All right, so we've got the fan off. Now we're gonna split the case by undoing these three bolts around the side. And now we can see the stator windings here on the outside. We can see the rotor in the center. To pull this out, I'm gonna have to hammer it from the backside because it's pressed in. All right, so now that I've got the rotor out of this casing, we can have a look at the good stuff. So right here at the front of the shaft, pressed on, you see a ball bearing. There's also another ball bearing in this aluminum casing here that allows this rotor to spin with your serpentine belt. What you can also see on here is we've got another fan and we've got some slip rings. Now these copper slip rings are there to allow direct current, DC, to flow from your battery into the rotor windings, which you can see inside those fingers there. Now the current flowing through those windings induces a magnetic field. What you end up with is one side of the fingers being a north pole and the other side a south pole. Now when this magnetic field rotates inside the stator, it will induce a current in these coils. Now these coils, well there are actually three coils. They are offset by 120 degrees, it's called a three phase alternator. It's more efficient than a single phase alternator. So yeah, when the rotating rotor induces that current, you end up with AC current, which needs to be converted to DC via a rectifier, which we'll talk about in a sec. Ultimately, you get DC current coming from this post charging your battery. We're gonna dig into this thing a little more and uh, see what we can find. Force will definitely break something, I'll tell you that. Okay, so I've got the stator separated from the housing, and you can see some cool stuff in here. This set of windings here, the three windings, send AC current 
to a rectifier which is made up of diodes. Now this diode's job is to convert the AC current into DC current for your battery. A diode is essentially like a one-way valve. If you think of AC current as current that moves back and forth and DC current as simply forward flowing current, that's where the AC current goes. It goes to a rectifier, the diodes turn it into DC current and ultimately you get your output from this stud. It goes straight to your battery. Now what you can also see is this black plastic voltage regulator. And what the voltage regulator does is it makes sure that your battery's voltage stays stable. So between 12 and a half and about 13 and a half volts. If you turn on your AC and you turn on your radio, you turn on your headlights, that added load will want to drop the voltage of your battery. But this voltage regulator will tell if your battery voltage drops and it will accommodate by sending more current through these brushes into these slip rings and into the windings of this rotor, which ultimately gives you more DC current to feed the battery. Now, if you look under your hood, you might not see an alternator that looks exactly like this one. You might see one that looks more like this one. Um, this is a compact design. It's got internal fans instead of an external fan. And actually, this one does not have a voltage regulator built in. Its voltage regulator is in its powertrain control module. So that's how an alternator works. That's what it looks like inside. Let's see what the junkyard has in store for us next time. So that's how an alternator works. We just tore into it, showed you the good stuff. Uh, now let's see what the alternator has. Let's see what the junkyard has in store for us next time. All the way to the end.